Hello, welcome back to CS11. In this video, we'll discuss a solution for lab number 12, uh, which I've included here. In this lab, we're going to code two functions, smallest and average, both of which accept three doubles. Okay, I've got my regular starter program here, and let's code first smallest. Double smallest, it has three parameters or arguments all of which are doubles, and in the question they're called x, y, and z, so I'll make them x, y, and z in my program as well. Let's declare a variable here, which I'll call small, and I'll set it initially to x. Because I'm declaring this variable here, inside of this function, it's what we would call a local variable, and remember that means it's only going to be available inside of this function and we won't be able to directly access this small variable in other functions such as main. Alright, let's give the other values a chance to beat small. So if y is less than small, small equals y, and if z is less than small, small equals z, and return small. Okay, so remember we have the name of the function, the return type, the name and type of the parameters, also you can see the number is going to be important, so this function can only be called or invoked with three doubles. And then inside of this function, once we've executed this code here, small will be equal to the smallest of those three values, and then we'll return it or send it back as our result. In order to call or invoke the function, we need to give the name of the function, and inside parentheses list our parameters or the values that we want to pass to the function. This would be a fancier program if I collected user input to test this function with. But for a quick and dirty solution, we'll just hard code some values. And run our program, and negative 4.7 is the smallest. And we can do a little bit of testing here. I'll save, recompile, and run 6.3. Okay, so that's the smallest function. Let's code next the average function. And why don't we save ourselves a little bit of typing by cutting and pasting. Notice that each function has to be declared separately. This function begins and ends, and then the next one begins and ends. And all three are separate, not overlapping. So that's important. When you're working with functions in a program, it's nice to perhaps think of them as paragraphs, and when you're reading a book, the paragraphs stand out visually, and your function should also. So for example, you should have more space between your functions than you have inside of a function, so that if you imagine looking at the program from a distance, that you can easily see where your functions are. Okay, now this function is going to be called average and this function is going to be even easier to write. Parenthesize x plus y plus z divided by 3.0. Okay, and once again we can test that function. And here we'll call it average save, compile, and run. And so there we see the smallest of the average. Now we can make this program much fancier if we accepted user input, if we labeled, and, and so on. But here we see the minimum required to complete the lab exercise. And this is a fine solution and will work for you. But while we're looking at programs and functions, let's talk about the third part of a function, uh, which we haven't talked about yet. Here we've talked about the definition and declaration and the call or invocation, let's talk a little bit about the prototypes. C++ 
is a single pass compiled language. What that means is when you invoke the compiler, like we do here with the command G++, etc., the compiler makes one pass through your file from top to bottom when it's doing the compiling. And so as it's working its way down, it sees, aha, here's a function called smallest. And it works its way down and says, aha, here's a function called average. So that when it gets down here to main and it sees the call to smallest, it says, I know what that is. And when it sees the call to average, it, once again, I know what that is. Now let's take these two functions and I'll cut and I'll paste them so that they come after main. And I'll recompile the program and we'll get an error. And it says here, use of undeclared identifier smallest. And so when the compiler got to this line, this time it's like, smallest, whoa, I have no idea what that is. And it complains. Well, one solution, as we saw, was to change the order of our functions around. And that's not actually such a horrible solution. The main function should typically be either the first function or the last. Everyone agrees that it shouldn't be hidden anywhere in the middle. I prefer to have it be the last function. Uh, so this would work just to change the order. But that solution won't always work for you. For example, what if we had a more complex series of functions? Then there might not be any order that you could list them in that was clear. And so that's where the idea of prototypes or headers come in. And a prototype or a header is an advertisement that says, hey, compiler, later on I'm going to tell you about this function. Let's go ahead and take these and cut them and paste them back here. Now the compiler is not going to allow this, except if we put in some function prototypes. And a function prototype includes the return type, the name of the function, and at a minimum, the types of each of the parameters. But then instead of following it with opening and closing braces, follow it with a semicolon. And the semicolon tells the compiler, hey, there's no code here, don't look for it. And then the whole thing, when the compiler sees this, says, oh, okay, later on, you're going to tell me about a function called smallest that has three double parameters and has a return value of double. And that's enough to keep the compiler happy so that when it sees this call, it can say to itself, I haven't seen that function yet, uh, but I know it's coming up and we'll keep going. And then when it sees this definition in here, can connect them pieces all together. If we also add a prototype or header for the average function, which also is double, 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 our program will now return to the compiling state. Oh, warning, huh? Forgot my new line there. Okay, compile, and it's back to running just fine. So you'll notice here that I just have the types of the parameters, and that's all that's required, and that's actually all that the compiler is going to use. You can put in the names of the variables if you want, but then it's for a human being that would be looking at the program. So for maybe documentation purposes or to make your program more descriptive or easier to read. But whatever you put here, the compiler will ignore. For example, we'll put in uh, a word there instead of Z and the compiler doesn't know or care. The names of the variables are optional. It'll work, you know, whatever you put there. If you are going to list them, of course, it makes sense for you to use the same names as you do in the actual definition so that it's easier to match up. One last thing while we're talking about functions is commenting. It's a really good idea to get in the practice of writing at least a brief comment that describes what your function does. And I think we can consider this to be our absolute minimum standard for commenting when you put in a function put in a comment that describes what it does you can put the comment with the, the definition of the function or you can put it with the header or both as long as you've got it somewhere and it can be very brief that'll keep me happy so here we can say return the smallest of three doubles now this function is so simple that 
we almost feel like maybe I don't want to comment it because maybe someone who's looking at this code could understand what the function does more quickly if they don't have the comment in their way. But in general, a comment, a function, is a good idea because the function will be doing some kind of operation and you would like to describe what that is. Some commenting standards are much more formal and have you list out all of the parameters, what they are, what their legal ranges are, what any assumptions are, preconditions, describe what the return value is in a huge block of, of comments. And I'll leave it to future classes or future people that you code for to impose those kinds of standards on you. So if you establish the best practice, though, of saying to yourself, I'm writing a function, I need to have a comment there, then that's good enough for now. All right. Well, that wraps up our brief solution for lab number 12. Thank you.